to your 13th episode programming tutorial and today's an important tutorial as we're looking at one of the fundamentals of programming apps for iOS and that's using storyboards instead of nibs or .xib files. So you'll be used to particularly in this tutorial series using xibs which means you have a .h, a .m file and a .xib file for every view or every screen in your app. There are a couple of disadvantages to this and let me explain those quickly. One, you got to have like 20 different XIVs if you've got 20 different screens, which obviously isn't practical. And it means that it's a lot harder if you've got, say, an iPhone and an iPad app, in which case you've got to have 40 XIVs. Whereas with storyboards, you have maybe 20 views, but that'll be in one or two storyboards, which is much simpler. And it also gives you a more obvious layout of what your final app's going to look like, which is very important. Uh, they act as what they say they're called, storyboards. So you have a view and then an arrow leading to another view, which is pretty much... A storyboard except then you're programming the storyboard. Um, the other advantage to an XIB is that they're outdated uh, about two years ago I think it was or 2011 in WWDC and Xcode 4 I think Apple or Xcode 4.6 Apple released storyboards and they're now the standard system and if you've downloaded Xcode 5 developer preview you notice that you can still use XIBs, but you can't create a project with XIBs, so you'd have to create the project in Xcode 4 with XIBs and then open it in Xcode 5, which isn't practical, so you really need to now know how to use storyboards. So that's what this tutorial is for, so let me begin by showing you what a storyboard is, and then we're also going to be looking at changing views in a storyboard, and then we'll also look at tab bars in storyboards, and pretty much get you up to date with storyboards. So I create a single view application, I'm going to do an, a universal, so I can show you what it looks like. And you'll probably have it looking like this at the moment. You've got to tick this Use Storyboards box, and then it'll use Storyboards. So let's call it Storyboard Tutorial. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'll just put mine in Documents and create that project. And the first thing you'll notice is you've got these two new files, main storyboard underscore iPhone dot storyboard and main storyboard underscore iPad dot storyboard. So if you were to create an app, um, an Xcode project with XIBs, it would look very similar except a different icon and it would be a .xib file. So these new icons, they're storyboards. And essentially what it means is you don't need to use, uh, you don't need to use a million XIBs anymore. You have two storyboards and you can add as many views as you want, but all the views are actually in the storyboard. So let's open up the iPhone storyboard and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is your storyboard at the moment. It's got one view and it's got this arrow and it's got these controls on the bottom as well as controls on the side. That first arrow indicates that this is the first view. Uh, in other words, when the app starts, it goes straight to this view, not another view. So if we were to drag in another view controller... Oh, no, I won't do that. Let me start by showing you this. So that's our view. We can use all the normal elements. So let's add in a segmented control. And just to show you that it works, let's run that application. And build succeeded. Um, once the simulator starts, you'll see that it works just like an ordinary app. Oh, I've opened the iPad simulator. Let me quit that and go to iPhone. Um, so at first, it's exactly the same as using a, uh, XIB. It only becomes different when you start adding more views. So let's add another view, and I'll show you what that looks like. So actually, let's begin by zooming out. If you've got a trackpad on a MacBook, you can just pinch to zoom. If you don't use these little zoom controls on the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to just click on where it says view controller and drag the view controller to the side so I've got a bit more room on my storyboarding area. Then in my objects panel, if you can't see it, go up the top here and make sure that this here is ticked or clicked on. It would look like that if it wasn't, so click on that. And then if you don't have objects, just bring it up. It means that you just need to pull that up. And we're going to drag in a view controller. And as you can see, you got all your usual views. You can have a table view, collection view, tab bar, controller, whatever you want. We're just going to add another view. You can put it wherever you want. I can put it up there, really. I'm going to put it here so I can see it more easily when I'm zoomed in. It doesn't matter where you put it in the storyboard. I'll move it over a tiny bit, actually. So let's, uh, let's add a button so we can switch between views. So we just add in a button into our first view. And um, we'll call it view 2. Then what you need to do is you need to control click or right click until you see this blue line. And you need to drag it, drag the line and that second dot which is just under the cursor to this other view controller so that the whole view is blue. And then you'll get this little menu and you're going to select modal. Make sure you select modal. 
Let me show you that again. Click, drag, select modal. Uh huh. And then you'll get this arrow up here between the two views. If I move this around, the arrow is going to move with me. The arrow will have a little box with a square indicate uh, a circle and a square inside that, indicating that it's a modal view transition. Then click on that arrow, and you'll see this menu in your Identify Attributes Inspector. Uh, you can set an identifier for it, which I'll explain what that means in a later tutorial. And a style, we need to keep that modal so it works, and we can change the transition if we want. But I'm going to leave it as the default, and I'm going to select that it does animate the view change. If we run that up now, something interesting will happen. Click on View 2, and you run to your next view. Let me improve that to you by adding a segmented control into the second view. So click a button, and we're View 2. And I could have when the value of this is changed, right click on the segmented control, drag, and make that modal. And then when I change the value of the segmented control, what you're going to see is I go back to that first view. So that's the basics of changing views in Storyboard. One thing you'll be used to in uh, XIBs is you'll be used to having all your various elements that are in your view in the side panel. You still have that, you've got, except you've got the side panel has all the views in it. So you can go, okay, there's view controller, uh, there's another view controller, and so on. But then something interesting happens. If I want to program this view and add code to this view, I can't just use view controller.h and .m for 20 views, so I've got 20 views. I have to create a new view con a UI view controller class, which is the .h and .m file for each view. I could, have, I could have them all in the same one, but that'll make the code pretty messy for that one. So what you do is you right click on your project summary, click new file, objective C class, and where you would normally have with XIV for user interface selected, you're going to unselect that or deselect that. Make sure it's a subclass of UI view controller, and we'll call this view2. And you'll be pretty familiar with this, it just creates two new, uh, two new views. I'll show you that one more time. So we'll right click, um, right click on the folder actually, so that they're all in the same folder. Objective C class, view 2, I've spelled that wrong, doesn't matter. Create, and there you go. Uh, I'm going to put that under view controller. So now you got to go command B to build your project. Because what you need to do is you need the compiler to recognize that you've added those two new files. Because otherwise when you go to set this view here as a subclass of view 2, which I'll explain what that means in a moment, it's not going to work. What I mean by a subclass of view 2 is... That's, I mean, what I mean by view 2 will be a subclass of view 2, um, what I mean by this view is going to be a subclass of view 2 is that all the code that goes into view 2 is going to affect this view. It's, this is the, this is the child of this parent code, pretty much. So then select this view controller by clicking on the text, but the second one, and go into this other panel, which is called the identity inspector. It looks like a little newspaper. And in here, that's where we're going to set the class of our view. So it needs to be a UI view controller class, which we just created, and we called it view2. You'll notice that nothing appears. Uh, now that happens because I've spelled it wrong. But if I hadn't done command B first, then nothing would have appeared, and that would have happened. So that keep that in mind, because you probably will come across that error. And for some reason in XCO5, if any of you are using it, that is an error in XCO5, because it doesn't seem to build that automatically for me. Um, be careful, because if you select the view, this is what it'll look like, and you'll try and type it and it won't work. That's because you need a UI view controller. So, if you need to click on this black part so that a blue border appears around the whole view. Otherwise, you won't be able to type that class in. If typing head doesn't come up, you've either got the spelling wrong, you haven't done command B, and make sure you go into your .m file, hit command B, and then go back to your storyboard. Or you've selected something else in this, what's called a scene. This is a scene here. Each one of these is a scene. I've got two scenes. Um, make sure it's that little orange one that's selected when you're setting the class. This one. And that means that I can then add code. So if I go into the dual editor and I go automatic, it's automatically set it as view 2. And I can add code. I can do, you know, where I can right click and drag as I normally would. Create an outlet called segmented control. And do anything I want as I normally would. So from there it's all normal. It's all the same as it otherwise would be. There's nothing new. So it's fairly easy to catch on to. In um, my next tutorial, I will show you how to use tab bar controllers, which are fairly basic. You just drag in a tab bar controller, and I'll show you how to add extra tabs and everything. 
But now you've learned how to use story files, I'm looking forward to seeing how you use them. Please feel free to send them photos and video responses, and we might feature you on the show. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any other ideas or anything you want to do with storyboards, just send us a message, comment on this video, or visit 99centsappdevelopment.com forward slash get in touch, or just visit 99centsappdevelopment.com, explore the website, it's quite a good website. I'd hope you think that. Or go to facebook.com forward slash 99centsappdevelopment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Be sure to like.